write the select board meeting of oh, April 11th. Um, welcome. I see we have people. Do we have recording any recording in progress? There we go. Okay. <laughs> any changes or additions to the agenda? And there is an addition someplace. Kim will show up and Kim wants to talk to us about um, and present her reasons why she thinks the town clerk needs a full-time assistant so that there should be two full-time people doing that job. And she's like, when she gets on, I'll, we talked. She'd been keeping in touch with Brian, but hey, there you go. Okay. Fire. Your, your, your fire tablet. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so we'll... That's, I just want to put that on as an addition and we'll do that fairly early in it so we don't make, we're delighted to have people stay and listen if they want to, but we don't want to force people to stay if, if, we, uh, if we can move it around. Um, Steve, you're here for... The, uh... I'm here uh, to follow up on consideration to okay. right. uh, revisit the uh, okay. so speed, we'll, speed sign. Maybe we'll maybe get you in early. And you're here. I got nothing else to do. <laughs> I could give you a list. All <laughs> hands <laughs> <laughs> you have questions on the positive renovation. Ah, okay. That's number three. Yeah. Spirit of yeah. and I might be able to help you out with it. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I'm here for um, Kite Park Community Circle about storage shedding. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go with Brian. Can we? Oh, wait. How about if we start with community? I'm, I'm going to jump around, folks. Okay. That's all right with people. Um, how about community? We'll start with community circle. Okay. Start community circle. Okay. Yes, so come on, come on up so that we well, can. Okay. Well, what I, what what I learned listening was people really need to be fairly close. Justin speaks very softly. We need to make sure he's got one right there when he needs to talk. I'll share with him. The end of the table with you guys when you talk. Once in a while, a little mumble comes through, not when you're talking, but when you're talking to each other, a little mumble comes through and you go, what? <laughs> I was trying to figure out what you were saying, but just. So I'm sort of the backup for this because we decided at the last meeting that Ron would take right. it over. Right. So Ron has the presentation and I'm here to say, yes, that's what we want. Okay. So um, that, that's, that's <laughs> right. it. I like it when I get those jobs, those right. are good jobs. <laughs> Yes, Ron, what are we doing? So um, we evaluated our space needs and uh, Mark French had called about a, a large space opportunity up at North Knight Park, the State Garage. And uh, we inspected that and deemed it unsafe and not workable until improvements were made. You know, the roof, the doors, the entrances, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. The fire department, the computer fire department, electric company, water company, it's just, it wasn't. So it needed work. So we re retracked and got back on track with the shed up here in the top left. 12 by 14 shed and uh, 100 square feet for both boxes and supplies, and the rest would be for town supplies. And, you know, pick up uh, poster boards and signs and right. things that we all have to get stored. So anyway. It's 12 by 14, top left. Zoning is exempt. Check with the village zoning administrator. Uh, 6,500 is the budget, uh, which is enough to exceed using a $5,300 shed plus $1,000 for materials. And I think there's an upgrade to try to match this color scheme of this building. So they're similar. No cupola, no ramp, just a step up. Right? six inches or something right on the edge of pavement so people right, can get okay. in there all winter uh, we'll have to be a little better to come across the heavy snow but that's not going to happen much anymore so we don't have to worry about heavy snow <laughs> <laughs> ever <laughs> uh, be interesting if we ever saw a four footer again like west uh, 635 
anyway, so that's the plan. The uh, funding is proposed on the agenda as ARPA funds. Last meeting, we talked about uh, the community circle having a budget of some sort for the shed to contribute. And I, and I, and I think the idea was that there would be a cost share. So any future requests were cost share. I, I think is what, where that was. So if there was another request for another shed, then there'd be some cost share from the committee. I don't know if it needs to be that way. You know, that wasn't, that was the concept that was talked about here, but with the mixed use already. Yeah, it sounds overly complicated to me. The ARPA money is available for Man. supporting community services like community circle and expanding municipal facilities. Which we use some, some of that room for the Zoom and remotes. So there's less room in there. I guess you know that the Zoom is part of the whole recovery remote meetings at the golf ball. So it's, it's kind of hard right. to get stuck too much in the weeds here. But so that's the proposal. The board has to approve use of ARPA funds on the agenda as such. And then you can ask that or well, we, also the pad the town would put down the, the con yeah, the so pad pad okay. that we needed. That'd be just stone from the town materials. Right. Stone. Okay. Yeah, they recommend us at least a six inch stone pad on top of good material, which is fabric on top of that. It's already fill material over there. Been there for a long time. At our town meeting, we requested a $40,000 budget for maintenance will this building fall under that maintenance category this building right. the shed is a new purchase which is part of the idea of art for money is new purchases to get things in and the town taking responsibility for maintenance done I'm guessing these sheds are well built i don't have one so i don't know but i think they take good care yeah high quality type shed it's not something you have to worry about blowing away the wind or anything right yeah I, i've had a, i've had one for about 12 years. I just don't have any more because I sold it, sold that property, but it was, I was very impressed with they come and they level it. And I liked that they were local people. And if there was any issues, you know, and there, which were none. So I was very pleased. Well, that. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. Have we got any more questions? <clears throat> Sounds good. Okay. All in favor signify saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, and we're going to do an up to 65. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks Thank you for the shed Good and night. for the shortest meeting I've ever been at in my life. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Thank you, everybody. Do you want us to change that decision? You can, you can make it longer. <laughs> what, what? No, no, I'm good. I just came from another meeting. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about it more. I'm surprised to see you. Okay. We've talked about it enough. Uh, I wish you were different. Now it can come out of your basement or your house. Like. It's at your house. Some of the stuff. Is okay. <laughs> you get some space back. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Do do we? If Steve was at a whole business, and we can do it pretty quickly. I, I was going to say, I think yeah. Let's 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 let Steve escape if he wants to. Okay. He's welcome to stay. Well, first of all, I appreciate you allowing me to come back and. Uh, we address this. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I maybe didn't explain myself uh, clearly, um, but after last meet, the last meeting, the last meeting I came to, I uh, got the impression that the select board was going to consider a town-wide assessment of the speed zones or whatever. That yeah. My 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 concern is basically three roads um I'm, I'm not asking to have the whole town reassessed um but i am asking my pri priority is the dirt portion of the centerville road um between the intersection of center road mckinnistry hill road and uh centerville road at the t down to uh where the Centerville Road uh, intersects with Mead Road. Right. Okay. Um, I think 50 miles an hour is way too fast for that road. Uh, there's a lot of people that walk it. Uh, there's kids on that road. Uh, there's uh, uh, 
brows or knobs on the hill there that you can't really see beyond that knob until you're on top of it. And so I would like to see that the town uh, select board um, post that section of road for 35. Um, and if the select board were to do that, I would ask that it entail four speed signs for that road, one up near the intersection uh, where the T is, or the Center Road and Centerville Road. Um, and coming, I guess it would be going west, coming down the hill, um, have one somewhere there before you get to Chauvin's Drive, and then have a second one kind of at the brow of the hill, uh, almost in front of where uh, Claude Marcou lives. Because there's quite a stretch here. I know speed signs don't slow people down, but it does make the, the, the drivers that want to drive safe aware that there is a speed limit in, on certain roads. And by having the, the two signs uh, going both directions, it gives people ample uh, notice that it is, you know, being reduced to 35. Um, and hopefully they will take notice if they missed the first sign, see the second one. And uh, going up the hill, my thought would be to put one uh, maybe near uh, uh, in front of herbal sheds, somewhere in that. Just as you yep. come yep. Uh, off, leave, yep. leave the, the laptop. Yep. Uh, and then once again, at the brow of the hill, so that it will you know, reinforce people to at least see the signs. Um, and yeah, you sign back, want to stop them. I, I heard you last week, uh, or the last meeting I came to, but um, that, that's my thought on that portion of the road. On Center Road and also on Centerville Road, I think we could use a couple more signs on each of those uh, for the 45 mile per, per hour speed limit. Um, on the Centerville Road, when you come on to Centerville Road uh, or to the, onto the pavement by the Mennonite farm, there is no speed sign between there and the 25 mile speed zone uh, before you get to the fire station. Before you get to the fire station. But there's three 25 mile per hour speed signs there within 100 yards of each other. I mean, coming south, coming towards the fire station. Right. Okay. So my, I think I've done due diligence in my uh, preparation, but uh, that's just my personal opinion. On that road, I would like to see a 45 mile speed limit um, kind of uh, cross from the Mennonite barn. Okay, yep. after you make the corner so that both people coming from the North High Pack Road as well as coming off the Dirt or the Centerville portion. And see a 45 mile speed sign right there. Okay, because there's no speed sign between there and, and uh, 25. Um, and then I would like to see a sign put up um, going both ways, um, somewhere near uh, Baker's. Mm -hmm. um, Carl Baker's place. Mm -hmm. That way, you know, you're coming through the turns, the by where Oval of God used to live, uh, Cage's house, yeah. 
Gerald Page, I think it was. Well, they start down, there's 45 miles an hour there. Okay, giving the benefit of the doubt that while people that have traveled through the, the S curves by over the garden don't assume that the, the speed is back to 50 or however fast you want to go. Um, and coming back, I would suggest one uh, going north uh, in this similar location by the Baker, Carl Baker's uh, drive or somewhere in that area. And then one, after you go through the S curves and it starts to straighten out before uh, the garden farm, almost across from the warning sign uh, for the curves, there's another 45 mile an hour sign there. So that once again, once they go through the curves, they see a sign, it's 45. And uh, so uh, that's my concern or uh, personal observation there. Um, on the center road, there's one up uh, just as you come, come uh, through, uh, down from the T used to be uh, where Cabot lived. Short ways down the road from there, there's one. But I don't think there's another one <clears throat> going uh, south on the center road till you get down beyond the, the I call it Cleveland Corners, Four Corners. Yeah. Um, to me, that's, that's quite a stretch of road just to have hoop signs there on that road. Um, because the first one is uh, right by Morse's Dairy coming mm -hmm. north. And I don't know uh, if I got it in my notes, or maybe you can recall if, where the the next 45 uh, on the center road, on the center road or if there is a second. Um, I don't think there is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So those are my concerns. Those are my observations. I don't know. Um, uh, Ron sent me the what? What do you call that, Ron? Uh, the last road study study that study you did. There, well, I don't. I don't think the board heard you say look at all the roads. Yeah. But we talked about the ordinance being five years old, and it's a good time to look at everything. Oh, fresh. Right. Right. So that's your list is pretty clear tonight. Center, center road. And signage, there's two different parts to it. It's the ordinance and the signage, because you can have an ordinance that's perfectly fine, but it's not signed and vice versa. Okay. So you want everything in sync. So that's part of the reason to look at everything. Anyway, um, the traffic study piece, that's when you change an existing ordinance, unless the state law changes it. So in probably another month, we'll know if the state of Vermont is going to change your gravel road on its own 35 doesn't mean we don't it doesn't talk about science it just means the ordinance or the state law will change yeah yeah so if, I, it may right. still be an issue well that's right know. but if they go ahead and change it to 35 that's actually very helpful for us because we don't have to change our ordinances then we just have to deal with signs okay um maybe you can clear something up for me um i i thought that town of high park had an ordinance for dirt roads being 35. Um, do they or not? No, no not the, a problem. State, the state law says anything that's not posted to 50 yeah. miles an hour in dirt. Yeah, there's yeah. no local ordinance dealing with gravel versus paved. It's what road segment, regardless of the surface. Does, does the select board have the authority to, yeah. if, if you as a group found that? Yes, it was warranted to change that your portion of Centerville Road to 35. Well, that's that's where you have to go through the traffic studies and the whole things to yeah. change an ordinance. Because there's state aid that comes on these roads. Right. And if you disturb the state, then you're into a battle. Well, we, we can, but again, there's a lengthy process that we have to go, to, go okay, through. Good. Uh, and, and I'm sure things have changed. But years ago, when I first moved up that way, I know they said that 
if you got so many signatures from people who lived on that road, yeah. that that is gone. That that just lets us know that people are concerned. Okay. Which is how, how we did the last study, actually. Um, because sure. folks, yeah, yeah, because folks were interested. We said it would be helpful yeah. if, you, if you could petition. let us do a petition and let folks know that it's just helpful for us then to be able to say, okay, and go to the planning commission and implement the study. Because that's, again, to change your ordinances that's the whole, you don't just get to do it. You have to go through the whole process to do it. Okay. That's why part of we're waiting. So if the state, and it's it's made it through the House, it's in the transportation bill, it's gone through the House and it's in the Senate. And nobody so far has heard any horrible against it. But if the state says those roads are 35 miles an hour, then we don't have to go through all the fancy process. We go, yay, we just then would have to do the signage. Okay. So that's why we're waiting to see if the state comes through and is actually helpful. Is that something you anticipate is going to happen in the short term? Yeah, yeah think... it's in the bill. They're looking at it now. So we should know by the time the legislature's out if they will have done it or not. May, early, mid May. Right? Yeah. Okay. About a month. All right. Um, what's have you folks had a chance to put any thought into additional signs where? Say like where it's forty five. Have you folks uh, discussed additional signage? Um, no, we're just waiting to see. Instead of doing a little piece here and a little piece there, let's see what we end up with and what we need to do. And then here's what we need to spend on signs that maybe we have enough money to do all in one year. Maybe we don't. And that but, uh, state state if they do mandate it. There might be some money for state money there. To yeah, get to help with signs. Right. Yeah, sometimes the state will come through the special grant. Sometimes the, the last part of a bill that yeah. they propose might say something like select boards may post all entries to the town with one notice, which would say all dirt roads are 35. And then we can get away with posting them everywhere in town. We just have it at the entries. Uh, that, I've seen that done before. And I don't know the rules of the bag, but my concern is obviously Steve has a very, um, you have a very specific concern, but being that we represent the whole town, it'd be hard for me to say, yeah, let's give Steve four signs on his road and one on my road or two, and then not look at Garfield and not right, look at exactly. not look at we probably no road. About, uh, mile spacing. Yeah, or something plus I think the standard's two miles spacing. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? There's I, a, thought, I thought uh, uh I'd have a sign. Beginning at the beginning, and then if there's a intersection, uh, intersection not all the intersections, or, it's the major intersections where you have people from out of town that might be coming across. There's an assumption that once you enter the town and you get to your place on the side road, that you know what it is when you're leaving. You may not know it when you're coming across the town, so we have to be careful about those intersections. Right? You're legally, you're supposed to have a reduced speed limit sign between any changes of speed. <sighs> Yeah, I think there is a requirement. I know I got I got beat up on a certain dollar amount of work. But anyway, that part of what I was talking about before is ordinance is two parts. It's the signage being properly spaced and and in place, as well as the wording of the ordinance of state law. So it's a it's a two-part true up, if you will. You know, it's always good for towns to do after five years. Yeah. It's a yeah. sort of a good maintenance cycle, I guess, to look at all that. Uh, and, and I don't want to prolong this, but I know you've got a lot of stuff going on. But for a rural town like Hyde Park, do you feel that a, 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 a sign every two miles, if that's the quote requirement, is, is that adequate? No. Well, there's Didn't adequate. Have more? No, no. There's adequate with enforcement level. So what matters? Well, I'm with, more, I'm more concerned with safety. Yeah. You know, because uh, the, the police departments have said, you know, unless they're going 10, 15 miles over the posted speed limit, they're not going to chase them down. They don't chase them down. Right. Well, that's another country I think that we need to. Cut. You know, covered sometime, but not today. Well, your point is fleshed out in the traffic study. All all those factors of what you're trying to accomplish are in there. Right. Safety being number one, obviously. So to be determined on signage, 
but we we're, we're trying to do now is give a list of the roads and if we're looking at all the roads there's some that are perfectly fine and yeah. the last time we did this the board said don't plug <laughs> into side roads that have three houses on them or four houses that everybody is going to be at their house at 200 feet so those are unsigned they're not part of the ordinance mm -hmm. So you have to go through that triage of right. 72 roads and decide how much money and time do you spend on all of your concerns versus everybody else's. And you can get to a certain point where you're, we looked at everything, here's our list of 12, let's deal with that and be done with it and get signage and be done. You know, that's, that's a possibility too. It's a little early to go to your conclusion of exactly how many signs we put up. Yeah, you know? okay. No, all well, I, we'll get there, but I, I just, you know, wanted to. Uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's definitely part of the, yeah, how you figure it out. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Um, well, I guess I've explained my point of view as clearly as I can uh, uh, and where my concerns are. Um, I don't travel up in the Garfield area, so you know I'm sure you probably have concerns up there as well, but um, yeah, it's snow. <laughs> uh, yeah. but people who travel say that horseshoe on a regular basis uh, have to realize that uh, somebody's going to get hurt, seriously hurt or, or you know injured. I think. Well, they got to so, figure out slow it down somewhere along the line. Something. And 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 a sign isn't going to make those people slow down. <laughs> no, I didn't say. I think uh, you know. Uh, Having having signs. Yeah, would, would yeah, we got it. Well, I say we'll wait and we'll see what the legislature and then we can then we can do a plan for the town from there. We'll wait and see what they do first. Okay. So we'll revisit this and what after that we'll just put on the agenda first. Yeah. Yeah. See what they do. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hearing, hearing me out and uh, uh, look forward to to uh, see what the uh, yeah we'll see what the legislature, the legislature does. does and then uh, you know where we go from there but, um, thank you very much thank you all right thanks for all the hope all right <laughs> well, I don't know how much you're not but, no uh, no it's very helpful uh, I do appreciate it thank you 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 Emergency shelters. Roll it. Yeah, he started. <laughs> <on it. laughs> well, we, we Greg Paws went up and gave us some estimates. And I was John, so Ryan and Brent talked to him and <laughs> that he stuff. It, he said he dropped some papers off. He did prices. The high part one is going to be a little bit more difficult. We thought we were going to get into that. But Brian can tell you more about that. And I think he's, he, he talked to me about it. I think he, they've got some good ideas there. Yeah, yeah, come up. So, we can. Um, so originally they were going to put a shower in, right? We have no room for a shower to do ADA. You could have a what, 10 by 10, Brian? Yeah, yeah. 10 by 10 room to have a shower and a bathroom. Because it has to be handicapped. It has to be handicap accessible. Yeah. Well, we don't have that here yet. <laughs> We're cramped as it is. So Greg Paws and us met, and he decided he thought the best option would be to renovate our meeting room we got now, put a utility room, washroom, decontamination. Where if you come back from a structure fire, you expect to wash your gear to get all the crap. Yeah. Yeah. Decontamination. Let me stop. Well, it's not a decontamination. It's to go in there and just get rid of your gear and leave it. Just like a locker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we're going to have a washer in it. We already have a washer, yeah. but that's where the washer will be. So you can throw because it right in there. Godly Hospital's got two of them up there. So right. There was a talk that's on a fun. decontaminating room, which is huge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. you'd have to have a separate paint because it's decontaminated water that you'd have to deal with in it. And Greg Paws is like, no. Copley Hospital's got one as often as you would ever use it. When Copley's closed. Right, right. <laughs> it's not like it's, it's 10 it's miles away. You guys are strapped for time being volunteers. Right. And if we have like a hazmat incident where you would need a decon, you know, you're going to have to stay there. 
anyway, because yeah. we're not trained to go in and do that stuff. Right, and we got a mobile oh, one in the county that's oh. come up and set up at mobile group. Right. Oh. And realistically, if you guys got into some chemicals, we don't want you in the fire station no. thinking that you can treat it yourselves anyway. And right, we don't, we're not trained to. Yeah. You know, and other people are going to be there to do it for us. We'd have to go through a bunch more training. So they were going to do like a utility, I guess he called it a utility room. And then the shower and bathroom. And then their kitchen. And then they're going to go off the end of the fire station, 16 feet, the whole way, like this fire station's in here. You know, you got your bay doors. So they'll come off here 16 feet down here. We're in my house. Right. right. And then the meeting room would come. We'd have a new meeting room, and that's where you could house people. If we needed a shelter, okay. Put yeah. your people in there in our meeting room, and then these two bays here would just be sixteen feet longer. I don't know if you've been in our station, but it's pretty tight. Yes, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> we've outgrown yeah. it. It's been, you well, know, nineteen seventy-six. I think it's built seventies, something like that. So that was Greg Paz's suggestion. Suggestion, easiest suggestion, and then and to stay with the metal building. And when I talked to you the other day, we just talking about the whole, all the concrete in the, in the rolling room there. Yes, yeah, so they would have to, they would cut all that concrete out well, because Eddie suggested. Because, and then it'd be all radiant in there. Because we can't. Right. We want right. to you, need to, you, you need to come up so it. So Eddie's yeah. idea was to take the concrete out of the rolling room, but where the kitchen wall is now because the mechanical or the electrical panel is. And then because all that septic for the new bathrooms is going to have to be upgraded to get it to the septic tank that's out the back right. wall. So by so the time he tosses it up and tries to put the heat in there, his idea is radiant heat for Roland's room down the through plus the new 16 feet. Because that that, that heat system is in there is over 20 feet. Yeah. So. yeah, and that's another thing we talked about because I asked Eddie, I said, well, if you're going to put a new heating system, right. new heat in this new addition, should we upgrade that? And he's like, well, that's not very old. And then he's like, oh, I guess it's at least 25 years old. He said. <laughs> so what it would allow us to do is do like some mud park and put moldings in the back corners to heat the bay areas down and get the furnace out of the attic and come off a new boiler system that's in the new utility room, which is by the two windows where the washing machine would sit. It sounds like a good idea to me. I just I don't know what the price is. I haven't seen the price of it yet. No, no, you I mean it, it got to the point it's that like, Greg's, oh. yeah, I guess, I guess oh. with Greg's discussion and trying to go from shower to hot storage to bay addition. You know, we kind yeah. of wanted to check check the temp of the board before we went too much further because you could be two, three hundred thousand dollars potentially with any kind of renovation like that. Um, which is almost doable. And the town energy committee is working on an energy grant for changing out old furnaces and whatnot. So that could pay off a big chunk of it potentially. Um, Elisa was taking the lead on looking at uh, the four town buildings for that energy grant, which oh. is the we already had a request from yeah. Spitzer. Right. The, the right. hall, that yeah. was $60,000, which is deferred. This is another boiling furnace kind of question. The town libraries uh, look at this building. So all four of those would be, you know, it's sort of timely, I guess, that we're talking about that. But if we broke it up into pieces, it starts to become a little bit of a problem because you're that's a lot of moving parts with all four buildings. But, and I think the money could be there to fund a big part of that. So that's one of the, you kind of give up speed for comprehensive plans, I guess you'd call it, try to push things through with the eight, seven ARPA money available and whatnot. There. Right. So, so the quicker that we can keep working on a certain specific project, the, the better it will go. If we have a bunch of these meetings, we're talking about two showers versus one shower, and we come back and oh, you know, we're missing grant deadlines and everything. So I think they're right. We didn't want to go too far and then have the board rule back a plan. It, you know, um, no. have you got the final plans from Greg yet? Of the addition, no, he did a he did an existing, well, right? Existing when, scan. when I talked to Greg, believe it or not, what he told me for the price, I think I told you what the yeah, price I was. I don't, off on that. I don't know, he's probably not too far. Well, what did he say? Well, I, I'm not going to. Well, well, what did he say? Everything <laughs> wasn't in there. Well, Everything yeah. wasn't in there. Okay. I think he's talking about just the structure, not yeah. the plumbing and not yeah. the heating, not yeah. the inside work. Because at that point, I didn't know about the heating. Right. 
Okay, but still, give me a ballpark. It was just not going to hold Greg to it. I mean, what kind of money are we talking about? Just for the for the structure. Grown up it was somewhere around forty grand. Okay. You know. Let me. Get, but that was kind of being high on his. Right. Yeah. Fire, but. Yeah. Just um, North Hyde Park, and 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 again, this all has come about thinking about for emergency shelters. With the guard facility up there, there do they can they function as a? They they can, but you have to have this like a million dollar retainer on the building. Yeah, it's a governor approval type process. Yeah, to get yeah I think it's a pretty good process to yeah. get to use it. So so I, think you I, can hold a class up there, but you can't go in the door without a million dollar policy. I, yeah, I think last yeah. time we talked about like that was like three years ago, and there was a way to go through the federal approval process, but. So we decided not to push that too much at the time, but I, I think the need is kind of interesting. So we've had events in Hyde Park, which are, don't, don't generate a lot of need for shelter. A lot of people take care of their neighbors and whatnot. We might right. have a handful of people that actually need overnight right. care. Sure, sure. Right. So it's not like we need to go through these so the expense of time of a big facility. If we right. have two fire stations, like what Roland was saying, with a few cots each, they may not get used. Or, you know, at full capacity because right. one station can handle the handful of people. So I don't, I don't think we're facing that kind of right. bigger project. So that's why I think the showers, cots available right. is a good planning tool. And then the, the, the showers would be I mean, the showers is more of a fire safety for right. firefighters. Right. Like if we get back and now he's talking cancer, 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 if you go wash your gear all the time, and if somebody wanted to jump in the shower before they go home to their family and bring all that stuff with them. They can have a place to take yeah, a shower. Yeah, so it's multi-purpose. Uh, you know, it's, right, right, it's not just an emergency shelter. And then shelter. these guys had on the space issue where you're stacking, you know, vehicles so you can't walk between them. Right. 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 In, right. in a garage. Right. So then the third. So anyway, that's a, that was you know just. I think, we get the design, now. I think we get the design, get some hard numbers in front of us, so that's something we can start proposing. I mean, three hundred thousand. I'm going to tell you, I throw my hands up and say, you. Especially with the truck coming, but if you're talking double that number, you're just talking seventy-five thousand in my opinion. We get the airport fund money. It's time. It's time to make something happen. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good, good, that good spent airport money is to yeah. do big projects yeah. like that. We only have a year left. Yeah, so. I'll have a year. North Lake Park should be a lot easier. Fires is simple because we're just going to turn two bathrooms into one and have a toilet. Um, so Edie's going to pay for that. I don't know. I was going to ask. Yeah. I don't even know how you get down there. <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> Good question. Well, they could. They could do their money. Brett, well, Brett, 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 Brett just sold the truck for double what we were expecting. So there's some money there. Yeah. 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 I didn't know how you were funding it. I knew you said it was through the state. What is it? Fifty fifty. Well, the, well, Chastity went to the, the presentation by the governor's uh, cabinet with all the commissioners there, saying there's plenty of money if you have the projects. That's why when when you guys talk about how much it costs, it, it it's going to cost what it costs, but the cost down to here might be three or four different sorts of right. That's what we're thinking. So it's not like a 50, 50 grand or a 90, 10 grand. It's, no, no, it's, it's, it's money. Yeah. So, well, yeah. and some are limited, some are 50, 50, like some special programs. That right. So I, you have control over the town's ARPA money, which is about 600,000 left there. Right. But I, I think what you do is come up with the big plan and how you could section it if you need to. And then, you know, take it again with the governor's cabinet money. Let's, you know, head for theirs first. Yeah. yeah. You know, and see if we, if, and even if we just get part of it. I mean, if, again, as you're saying, it's a whole big plan where it costs $250,000. If you can get $100,000 one place and $50,000 someplace else, you know, then let's, if we can get it all done, great. But right. if we can't, well, here's the, here's the smaller piece that we can get done. We might as well see if we can get it done. That was the input we needed to keep moving. Right. Right. It's like, what's next? I'm like, wait till Tuesday. <laughs> no, right. no, I'm, I'm for it. Yeah. I mean, let's get all the prices together and find out. Yeah, right. you know, are you talking half a million dollars? Are you talking 150000 well, I'm going to go ahead. Right. With, with you and Greg to the same. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So let's get and get some numbers. Ideas. Solid number. Bring them back in two weeks if we can. And yeah, I think I'm relying on the chiefs, assistant chief, chief, to fine tune those because we don't want to go so fast that you're second guessing yourself when the contractors leave and say, oh, we should have thought of something. 
So even though we can go fast, I think having your officers think about stuff, having Greg bounce off ideas is 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 more important now than it is when we seven months down the road for month. the contractors. Yeah. Okay. We'll do a month then. I mean, yeah, maybe end of next month. Whatever. Once you start seeing the plans, you'll you'll right. Because once you get yeah. the plan, you're gonna be yeah, yeah. So it all depends on when yeah. Greg gets you the plan. Right. right. So yeah, we'll just plan on that. Yeah. Greg gets the plan. Like take Greg too long. No, he's he was great on the first round. Yeah. Well, he worked up there Saturday and Sunday and he didn't care. Yeah, I know there <laughs> Sunday. Yeah, that's, 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 that's all I need. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. We'll keep plodding along. Any other questions? Is a question? You're welcome. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we did take the thirty thousand dollar deposit on the truck from Iowa, so that's sitting in our bank account right now. Fifteen thousand is technically yours. Fifteen thousand is technically easy, but we're right. just sitting in the bank account. Yeah. Good place for it. It should be gone hopefully around May first with another check for a hundred thousand. But May first is the estimated delivery date for them. Yeah, right. That's up to us. <laughs> <laughs> if we can get the truck to drive that way May first, have a better deal than doing a what they call a hot load. Then May first, the truck will be headed to Iowa, and we'll have the other hundred thousand. Yeah. Nice to, work. Just to mention, if you guys do the addition. Are you considering doing a little extra storage, like overhead storage or something? Because it sounds like it's kind of strong storage anyway. So I'll throw it out there. Well, potentially. Well, if the, do potentially, it, we could get rid of that shed that we have out front. No. Because yeah. we would go all propane, because we got a 500 gallon propane tank in the room with that generator. But you'd also get rid of all the ducts in the furnace in the attic. Right. And you'd get rid of all the ducts in the furnace upstairs. You'd have and then you would have that whole shed that oh, okay. you could do something with in the future. Okay. You know, Okay. Because the reason we got that shed is for our oil tank and well storage now. But <laughs> okay. But we'll get rid of these gonna put more needs out in the back. Well, like Brand said, he said you might as well go propane. He says you got that great big propane oh, tank in the ground. Yeah. He says it's no better than your generator. Right. And all the run the generator once a week for test. <laughs> okay. Great. Sounds good. We'll see what we come up with for numbers. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Let me go. We got <laughs> Kim waiting patiently here. You still there, Kim? Yep. <clears throat> see Jill. I'm here. There you go. Um, we had uh, Kim checked in with me a, a week and a half ago, I guess. <laughs> And um, she'd been regularly checking in with uh, with Brian before, and um, I'll I'll let her catch us up on on her on her healthcare struggles that hopefully are are getting are getting better and they're certainly lasting a lot longer than than anybody would was would certainly hope that they will they will get to a good resolution much sooner rather than later the way it's been going. But in the in Kim talking to me, and there've been sort of, we've had odds and ends of conversations about, um, and, and again, how the town clerks, not so much the job has changed, but how it really, if you drop back to the beginning of COVID to where we are today, so much of, and, and Kim, Kim has been good about pushing the town um, to use money to get all our records online. You know, it used to be anybody wanted anything, you had to come into the office to do it. Now, so much of the work folks are doing online from, you know, doing record searches, um, filing all sorts of stuff, registering your dogs, just all kinds of things that um, I said that I, I it was difficult, um, I felt to justify two full-time positions doing the job of, of town clerk. Kim has had, you know, you have, the, you have the town clerk and then Kim has felt that she needs a full-time assistant to do the, uh, the, to do the job. Um, Kim still feels strongly that, that she, um, that that's warranted. So I said, well, why don't, you know, um, set this up so she could talk to us, but also for us to, to just, for Kim, you can catch us up on on sort of what your latest is from your um, from your doctor and um, sort of what your plans are. I I well, we'll just sort of start there. 
well, I'm sick of being at home. I bet. Um, so I went to the doctors on the 24th of March and when they did the labs, um, my red, red blood cell count was lower than it, it had been at any point in time during my transplant recovery. They don't know why that happened or they don't understand why that happened. It's just, it's worse than it ever was. That was never an issue before, before that it was my, um, white bloods count and my leukocytes. So um, anywho, so they're telling me that they think that it's going to be about three months to get back to where they, where it was. But because they're not hundred percent sure about that, I am having to do labs every four weeks and they're they'll and they'll call me back and, you know, after those labs and let me know where they're at. Um, so I'm hoping don't know why it dropped. They did rerun the test to make sure it wasn't an error and it wasn't an error. So it is what it is. But I'm hoping that as quickly as it dropped, it quickly comes back up. They just can't explain why, why it happened. Um, so anyways, so I'm, I'm home for the last, my next appointment um, is in June, but they're testing me every month for my labs. I'll be tested at the end of April. They'll know the results within a couple of days because I do the I do the labs here at Copley and those labs get sent to UVM to be processed and then UVM contacts Dartmouth and it just takes forever. So it'll be a couple of days after I have those labs done before I know you know where I'm at with that. Um, so hopefully I'm able to come back after those labs. That's my that's my hope. Um, in the meantime, you know, Krista and I have been communicating on a regular kind of irregular kind of basis you know she'll text me or call me um, anytime she has questions so you know we're we're working together on that still um after so i did tell susan that after um a year i i go to my next appointment in june and then i go again in september and then after that it'll be two visits at six months apart. And then after that, it's every year. Now, for the last 13 years, I've been going to Dartmouth and getting labs a lot. Um, what I will be required to do once I'm able to come back to work and I reach that year mark will actually be less than what I've had to do to stay on the transplant list and all the labs and everything. But it's still you know, kidney maintenance, as they call it, they want to make sure that my medications are at the right levels. So it requires labs. And because some of my medications have a higher um, cancer causing rate for people, um, I do have to add a few people to my regular, you know, annual checkups, like dermatologists and stuff like that. Um, but again, it's actual, it's less than what I was doing before. So um, that's kind of the, the medical, you know, update. Um, they did tell me that when I'm eight, when they tell me I can go back, they're very confident that with me just going back and me wearing a mask that I should be fine. There will be a point in time where the doctor tells me, okay, you're now at the point that we think that you're, you're safe. You can stop wearing a mask. But until I get to that point, even when I go back to work, I just, I'll just have to wear a mask. There's just no ways around that, which is fine. I've been wearing it for you know three years anyways. Um, but that'll be me. That's nobody else. Okay. Did I tell you anything? I can't remember. I can't remember the conversation. It was a long one. Oh, yeah. was, there any, was there anything else I told you that I didn't just share? <laughs> uh, no, we had a good conversation about the puppy. <laughs> um, well, and, and we should probably have for, and, and I don't know if we've had them before, but I'm, I'm sure it's sort of part of the process that maybe the next time you talk to your doctor, or maybe it's when he says you can come back to work, that he, he submits something that we have on file that says it's that you can come back to work and hear any conditions that need to be considered or, or we will or, absolutely do that. They've already told me that they will do that when the time comes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Okay, that's there's sort of your health checkup in terms of how much, uh, again, with how much assistance you feel is warranted um, for the, as, as an assistant to the town clerk. So just because our records are online doesn't mean we're doing any less work than we were doing before. The difference is the number of bodies coming in to sit at those computers to do the research. Prior to COVID, um, when they would come in, we didn't help them very often. Uh, you know, if they had zoning questions, they went to Ron. Um, when researchers come in, they know what they're doing. They go to those computers, they go to the indexes, they go to the books, they make the copies that they need. They tell us what they've gotten copies in time. We cash them out and off they go. Um, so just because they're, those bodies aren't coming in to do their own work and whatever, we still have so much other work to do. There are things that Krista has had to set aside, and I don't know all those things, but there are things that Krista has had to set aside because I'm not there um, that will get done at some point in time, whether it's when she has time or when it's when I come back. Um, but there are things that are getting set aside in a traditional non-election year, this is the time that we take as clerks across the state that we take to catch up on all of our projects. Sometimes it's getting certain things cleaned up in our, in our vault as far as um, back scanning books, getting some more documents online for people to find online. Sometimes it's, you know, just cleaning up the vault as far as overall storage. It's, cleaning up the voter checklist. It, I mean, there's all kinds of things that we do throughout the, the, the non-election year that we are, just don't have time to do during an election year. Um, I, just, I just know that, you know, based on prior years, based on what I know from going forward, um, there's just no way that I could operate that office with one or one and a half you know, or one and three quarters people. Um, people fill out, it, the, the dog registration is not online. What's online is the paper form that people print, fill out and either bring in or they mail in with their check and their rabies certificates and whatever else is needed. We still have work to do in the office to do that. Um, you know, Krista sent me a picture there, people are still coming in to register and renew their registrations for their vehicles and their boats and their four wheelers and their, you know, all that stuff. Um, not as more now this past month than at any point in time, I think during COVID. So like people are starting to come back into the office to do things that maybe they did by mail or maybe they did online or somebody did online for them. Um, but you know, things are still busy in the office and, you know, not having that extra help means I'm back to working 50 hours a week instead of, you know, 40 to 45. Okay, anybody, anybody have any questions or need any clarifications? And, and we, can, we can always send you any, I always seem to think of questions after a meeting. So I know we can always send you questions if, if folks think of something after and looking for some more information. And I always think I'm really prepared for this. And then I get like, really, I, and I'm going to say the word defensive because I value, you know, what our services are to the town and know that with reduced staffing that, you know, the services that we provide would be a little bit harder, less, um, less timely because there's, too much going on and one person or one and a half people or one and three quarter people trying to get it done. Um, but I always feel like I have all these things in my head and I write them down and then I'm in this position and I'm like, did I forget everything? You know what I mean? So I just feel like, I, mean, I just feel like I know, you know, what, what the hours that we have um, and the people that we have, you know, we're getting the job done. There's no free time. Um, I know Krista has been straight 
out. Um, by statute, there's a new law that says everything you get um, for recording has to be recorded within three days. And there have been times that that's not happened since I've been gone because she's been so busy. Um, that law went into effect last year in July. So, you know, she's doing everything she possibly can to stay on top of stuff, but there's a give, you know, there's a, there's something has to give somewhere and, you know, she's making the best decisions that she can. And I fully support those decisions. And I, I just don't know what I would do without a full second person, you know, and, and as that second person, uh, both of us, you know, we do things in a lister capacity and we aren't listers. You know, we don't have a lot of that knowledge. Um, people ask us questions, we answer the questions the best that we can. And there are points in times where we have to tell people, I'm really sorry, we don't know that. We'll have to have somebody call you or we forward them to the listers. Yeah, so I think most of that's been, particularly with Justin, that I think we've dealt with that stuff pretty well. I think we yeah. had that sorted out for but, you. But what I'm saying is these are things that we've done that really aren't part of our office um you know bringing the listers back in if the lister is still in the office only half a day you know we're still doing some of those things um researching the lister cards that's just not a clerk thing but it's something that we do um so you know there's still the dog things you know krista has gone out of her way to do something the task of something that should be an ACO thing. And, but we've done it because there isn't somebody in that position who's willing to do it. So it just, there's just so many things that we do that, you know, really does require two people. Right. Do you feel that we have neglected the town since you've been out, since we've only had one person in there? Um, I don't, think that we've neglected the town. I think that Krista has met every need for the customer that's walked in the door, for every voter who walked through the door to cast a vote at town meeting, at general election. Um, she has met the state guidelines and deadlines um, and the federal deadlines for elections. Um, but there's some internal things that are being set aside that, that are out of her control. Um, you know, things that when we get to an end of an election cycle, we kind of start planning the upcoming year of those projects that we're going to do that we've kind of set aside from the prior non-election year. And we, we, you know, she hasn't even had a chance to even consider, you know, where we left off and what we were going to do. And it's not anything that's her fault. You know, it's just, it's time management and she's doing the absolute best that she can based on the immediate need of what's put in front of her at that moment. Is it a phone call? Is it a customer? Is it, you know, what is it? And she's done that. Okay. Well, you have to excuse me, Kim, just because I, I don't know. I just, just kind of ask the question. But right now, you're... What's your role right now? Like, what what are, what are you acting like? What are you, is Krista doing? Like all of the clerk, and then in in the absence of the clerk and treasurer, the assistant clerk and the assistant treasurer steps up as the acting clerk and the acting treasurer. It, so so like I, I again I'm only asking I, I'm just educational so um like right now you're you're not able to do other than just assist her with questions right only thing I could do from home really um is answer my emails okay because of because everything in the office is based on um you know equipment mm -hmm. that I don't have at home I can't record um, you know, customers, I can't do anything for the customer that walks in for their marriage license or their fishing license or their DMV renewal or their dog license. You know, I can't, I can't do those things. A lot of those things are customer based, like at the counter transactions. And I just can't do that from home. Understood. Understood. I, I was just asking, I didn't know if like Krista's, you know, you're still kind of training Krista every day or something to that effect. If something comes up that she doesn't know, 
she'll call me or she'll text me and be like, uh, what do I do? And then we walk, you know, we walk each other through what, what she's dealing with and, you know, to get it done. Because when I left, I had her trained for everything that she would need to know through the end of November. And she knew that if anything, for any reason came up, she could call or she could email me. The doctors and I had zero idea that what has happened would have, would happen. We had oh, no yeah, clue. Right, right. right. Um, they had been telling me, everybody goes back to work after, you know, six to eight weeks. Okay, yeah. great. So we planned for six to eight weeks. Yeah, There's that's, that's all so, anybody can do in this situation. Nobody, yeah. no, nobody expects mm, the, the worst is going to happen and things just keep getting complicated. That's not, that's not anybody's fault. That's just, that's just the way things go sometime. Let me, and, oh, go ahead. You no, know, Kim, I was going to delinquent taxes. Um, she's done all that this year, right? You, well, you there's, not, there's, that, so. there's nothing to do with delinquent taxes um, other after a tax sale, af, other than send notices to the people who have payment plans. So she did send some notices out to people who had fallen behind on their payment plan and weren't calling and talking to us about it. Yeah. I don't know where that ended up. Um, but when I had this conversation with my doctor, when he said, oh, it's probably going to be three months. I'm like, uh, <laughs> so I said, these are things that are going to happen before the end of three months. And I said, my assistant is not trained for these things. C you know, can I, can her and I make plans to go, you know, after hours when there's zero people in the building, but me and her, um, or on a weekend, you know, can, can I go in and her and I do these things together so I can help her with them because she's not trained for them. And he said, as long as it's the two of you and you guys wear masks, you know, yes. Um, and I'm, he says, I'm saying that right now based on today's labs. Your labs may be better by the time frame you're talking about. I'm thinking of taxes when May 16th, when current year goes delinquent. Right. Um, so he says, your labs may be a little bit better in May so that, you know, it won't be as critical as I feel it is today at the end of March. But yes, if you're both wearing masks, you can go in there and you and the two of you together can do what you need to do. Okay. So, you know, there are things coming up, um, you know, end of tax year, delinquent taxes, setting tax rates, getting tax bills out. You know, I don't know how, I, I do not want this to go on any longer. I'm sick of it. I am sick of myself being at home. Um, but there there are ways for things to happen if it goes longer than, you know, I, I want it to. I want to get notice from my doctor at the end of April that I could go back to work. Yeah, so, I'm sure, I'm sure. But there are ways to make things happen so that those important things don't get, yeah. you know, set aside or forgotten or late or whatever. Right, well, if, if, if that's what needs to be done, we, again, we'll all figure it out because that's what we do, we'll figure it out, so don't, don't don't worry about it because again we'll 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 figure it out and hopefully your numbers are better so so uh, that that will that will make everything much simpler right from our point of view I, like I know in the past we've given a bonus due to the work extra work yeah we're Krista understands her role we'll get there. Um, okay, I guess anybody got any more quest questions for Kim? And again, if we think of something, we'll send them to you, Kim, or if you think of something else to tell us, just, you know, ship it to us. All right. Okay, hope you're feeling better sooner. I, I'm telling you, I'm feeling 110% physically. Mentally, I'm at about 50% because I'm sick of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, but, like, I'm ready to get up tomorrow morning and go to work. I just... The immunity just is a right, right. Ugh, frustrating. Yeah. Well, we'll assume it'll get better. Okay. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you, Kim.
Lisa and Denisa here. And right. Victoria, I think are all on the same topic. That's the, and that's the, the mini grant. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. This is Elisa. Um, and Victoria is here from LCPC. Gotcha. And okay. That's number five that we're looking at here. Okay. So um, are you, are, is the board familiar with window dressers? It's a um, weatherization program that has been around for a while. No, I, I, Ron, did you send out the little description of it? Yeah, it's part of the packet, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I, I think you're asking if anybody take it, took it and taken advantage of the program. I think that would be your no response. It sounds like you're asking if anybody participated in the program. Oh, no, no, just familiar with what the program is. So um, it's a weatherization program and <clears throat> the, um, who is it? MERP, <laughs> what is MERP? Municipal Energy Resilience Program, is that right? Um, is doing a mini grant um, for this kind of weatherization, energy resilience um, initiatives. And we, the, the way window dressers works is we need to identify people who want the window inserts and um, as well as volunteers. So it's really important to be able to communicate with everybody in town that we want to do this. And so um, we'd like to do a mailing and the mailing costs money to send to everybody in, this, in the town um, with all the information that we want to put into it. Um, and the mini grant would pay for that. The thing that the town would need to do would be to be the, uh, the fiscal agent. So the, the bill for the mailing would come in, the town would pay it, and then the grant reimburses the town. So it's really not costing the town anything. I just need your permission to, to do that. Is that right, Ron? Did I, did I say that right? Yeah. yeah, he said that Jennifer would be the contact of the fiscal agent in and out. And yeah. somebody has to do the final report. I don't know who's doing the reporting back to the state. So I guess that's, I, I don't know, I'm clear about that. Is that something that the town office will report on, or do we give you sort of the records and then the committee or Victoria would sort of close out the grant? How's, how does that part work? The grant reporting is something, is a service that the Lamoille County Planning Commission could assist with. Um, we would just need to be in contact with the town just to get some information. Yeah, no, that works. If, if you're, when you, every grant has reporting deadlines. So if, if LTPC is actually just monitoring that, then that's a quick email, send us your records, and I'll take it from there to close it out and get our reimbursement check. So it's just easier if we know who's doing that. Yes. Um, Sometimes they can get missed and just hang out there. Is did you do the reimbursement? Yeah, <laughs> I thought you were doing it. Right. right. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah. Thank you. So the grant would pay for the the mailing to go out um, to the residents of the town of Hyde Park, and we'd be looking for volunteers on the build day. Uh, we already have a building location, and we've got a lot of um, help with um, the Stowe Energy Committee is. Um, planning on helping us. So we just want people in town to know that it's available and what it is. We're going to be at home day with some examples of it. And the bill day is going to be um, the weekend after Columbus Day, I think. Um, so we've got enough time to plan for it. Um, and so really, it's just a formality of wanting your approval that um, that we're going to do this. It's not going to cost you anything. In my opinion, this is the easiest thing to vote on. So I'll make a motion. <laughs> I'll second that now. <laughs> okay, anybody got any more questions? Thank you for good? donating your time and doing what you guys do. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah, really appreciate it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Aye. Okay. All right. Thank we you. We like these guys. <laughs> okay. We're just, we're just going through things backwards tonight. Brine replacement equipment.
$45,000 quote to replace the guts on something that uh, Jennifer looked at the history on. I think it was somewhere in the table here. It's a little spreadsheet of, yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, it's $105,000 in budget savings due to not spending winter salt. That doesn't mean it's related directly to Brian. It just means that that's what it's a reduction. Yeah, yeah. so we, it could be for multiple weeks, but we yeah. don't have any way of really capturing the exact yeah. answer. Yeah, because the winters were a little easier. Than they were. Could be some of it's related to the computer use. Uh, it used to be open up the valve and go, and now it's what's the road temperature? What's the speed I'm traveling? So it's much more of a scientific application than it ever has been. And that a lot of that's due to Mark French, who that actually keeps his eye on trying to figure out all those things. A lot of it's a lot easier just to turn the, the valve open and let it fly out the back. So it's a little bit more complicated, it takes a little more time. It's proving good equipment. It's in the sense of it's not bad equipment. I think there's some idea that you plan for the replacement, you need to plan for the repairs. And hopefully this eliminates the first couple of years, which was really heavy on staff time to figure things out, make the right connections. Now this is the guts of it. Should you know, manufacturing will say 15, I use 10, maybe the life of it will be 12, and put four or five thousand away in the uh, reserve to just replace it again. Yeah. And then have, just like the fire trucks and everything else, the replacements come up quick and fast. And even though I'm sort of go slow, it's like, oh, let me just do that. So where does this 45,000 that's being proposed come from? That we didn't resolve. We had a uh, projected balance in the winter salt south of 20,000. Mark's debating hopping off the shed, which could reduce that maybe down to 15,000, which leaves about 30,000. We do have the reserve fund, which was just freshly inputted from the town meeting day vote. We didn't know what that money was for, but the 30 could come from there. Um, it's not. Ideal because we are trying to build that up for the greater replacement. So we still don't have a good idea what that's going to cost in two to three years. So, anyway, that was the, the output money, it's new equipment. Could be, it's, you know, part of that. And it's like, like the repair costs of really not improving the town necessarily, you know, like a housing project with the output money um, or um, some of those fire safety improvements might do that. So, it's kind of like one of those depreciating asset investments, which is a it's all out, but it's maybe not the best use of our money, but it's available. The reserves available, and then uh, net to probably hopefully tomorrow, we're going to start doing our first year end projection, which will answer that question too. Does highway food operations have money in the current operating budget? We don't have that number yet, but we do have to spend some time on it with Mark. So, so thirty thousand dollar question is kind of where we ended up, and. Um, is Mark still online? I don't know if he has anything else on funding. Oh, yeah, he's there. He's going to need to come up with 30000 Yeah. 15 from when they're So. <clears throat> yeah. Ron? Yeah, we're talking about funding the, the difference there, Mark, on the 45 versus what you, you know, what you might have identified for funding within your budget. Right. Yeah, we got to go through the budget closer to see where everything is, but I know there'll be some in the salt and we'll have to find the rest. Have you looked at overtime this winter? I, I haven't looked at it yet. Yeah, we're actually pretty good on our overtime. I can't remember my exact hours. I do have it, but we're pretty good there. Nothing, nothing to see there. So it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> there could have been, we, didn't, we didn't go over. Having a month season all winter doesn't help. Yeah, true. <laughs> so, so that might be a condition. There's a, there's a backdrop of the reserve, and then there's this little no more in a week or so about the year in projection. But you don't still know that to be We're out. We're out of right. Brian, we're out of prime season. But right. I think there's a ticker on the quote, right? Right. The quote said 30 days. Right. Now we're going to do this May 16th or something. So if we if we push it out a week or two and really work that 60 day quote, we'll have better information before that right. quote comes out. Do you remember the but, exact date? Well, but I think I, I, I think we're going to go ahead and do it. The question is where we're getting the money, which is that can go for a while. I mean, I don't clearly from some of those pockets we can come up we can come up with the yeah. money. It's just which pockets it's coming from. Exactly. So I'd say to go ahead and I mean, if 
unless somebody thinks something's going to happen and we can't find the money and we aren't going to do it, to go ahead and go ahead and approve it and can come back with probably what we have is some options as to where we ultimately we want to take the money. Yeah, yeah. If, if ideally you all prefer operating budget, then we'll try to get really sort of really positive numbers as best we can and tell Mark that whatever we come up with and present to you at the next meeting is what he has to work towards for June 3rd. So it's not just, hey, we found 40,000 that right. you're not gonna spend right. and he cannot spend 31,000. You know, we we'll use that one day. So that's one way to do it is the operating budget in the backdrop again is to preserve this unplanned expense, which is what your service plan. Right. So and I would probably not recommend our but we, we haven't gotten too hard on the list to figure out what we want to spend on appreciating investments. It's all like great fit. Does that make sense? Does so we make a motion? I'll make a motion to spend the forty-five thousand on uh, Brian's computer and whatever they need. Uh, we'll find the money from two two different sources. You got the money either way, but yeah, it's the right. split. The split I can't give you. We'll right. be discussed. Yeah. It, 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 how we can discuss it next? Yeah, that can be yes. yeah. wherever, wherever we can talk with. Yeah, that can, that can happen anytime, all up to June thirty. Right? And locking in right. the day we should happen sooner. Soon. Right. Right. Let's get that one. Right. Right. And this should, this should be good for another 15 years. 15 years, right? right. Yeah. Okay. 10 to 15. If, if Mark's and the crew is good with maintenance and keeping up with stuff, it should be 15. If I think if you're knowing that, you're closer to the 10 year. Well, probably. I mean, the numbers you hear that they definitely cut down on the salary. Right. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's definitely. That's the motion. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Let's start back down the list. Planning and zoning. Oh, yeah. Oh. Right. I think that's it. Thank you. That's it. Oh, you're okay. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The planning and zoning administrator job description. Met with the town planning commission last night, and it was the same same thing was on their agenda. I also reviewed the planning commission staffing plan that you all saw at the prior meeting. I met with Bob Malbon after your meeting, and he was like, "This is interesting to see." Because being a planning commissioner, you don't always see the town system and structure. So between the organizational chart plus the, the description about the staffing changes, they all saw that, and we talked about. Uh, I don't want to call it impending doom, but one of the things that we're seeing in the county is is a I think I used the word aggressive last night with the planning commission, but people that know the system of local governments or city governments know how to push the right things to sort of affect uh, other people's properties. So if you know if you're coming from a place like San Diego, California, or Montana, or Austin, Texas, if we have all those examples in Hyde Park now that we didn't have two years ago, we're saying we want things to be done by your, your regulations very strictly. And if you're not doing it or we don't like a project, we're going to use that system, which may may perfectly be approved by the DRB and get a zoning permit. We're going to use the system to grind that out with the neighbor or have to exchange. And, and that only requires a, a, a more responsive response from the time, you know, more, more uh, better records, better response for legal response, and better uh, Freedom of Information Acts. We, we had two of those, we never had them before. You know, just like just stuff that's elevated on staff time. Where you have to respond, it's almost like you don't you don't have the option at that point. So what, the way I got with the planning commission was this particular job just with just two things. One, it it allows both the DRB and the PC to have something that's focused on them, and and also responsive to those other issues that are pending. Stowe's having a hard time with that right now with Airbnbs and all their housing projects. Everybody's elevated, and that staffing team out there is pretty well capable, but they're feeling the stress of this newer 
it's hard to name what it is. <laughs> it's just different. You know, it used, it used to be you talk to your neighbor, I'm gonna go to the DRB facility permit. Oh yeah, we do it. Oh, that's fine. I'll even show up. And then we got you know people participating, what kind of appeal on the other on that permit can be appealed. Or how it can be dragged out through the court process, whatever. And that's not that's not gonna negative. The system is there for that. I'm just saying the, the awareness of how to use it is elevated with um newer people that are investing in Hyde Park, this is their place. And if you have the rules and regs and you're just used to being more of a neighborly bylaw, <laughs> this is kind of, I, I see a trend, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So this will help us respond to that, I guess. You know, that, that was what I was, and that was the second thought. The first thought was way back in October, September last year, when we were trying to figure out what to do with the town administrator who had all these hats on and try to figure out how to change your priorities around. This was, wasn't even on the table back then. This was just a purely workload issue that we started this process with. So I think that there's a dual a dual benefit that I didn't really consider until the last couple of months. So. And are they happy with the job description? Yeah, they had no changes to the job description. Uh, this would result in a two-part question. It needs to be approved, which is new town position, and then you need to talk about advertising and scheduling and what to do all that stuff. If you advertise now, there'll be enough time before June 25th to hopefully get somebody in to look at resumes anyway, see what you're getting. If things go a little sideways and there's a big goose egg, then we have to revisit. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know what the other options are. The planning commission had that question. So you're doing 24 with retirement and maybe some leave time built in because it's mandatory 18 hours now. What about the health benefits? You know, why why cut out the people that want that? And say, well, it starts at 30 hours, not 24. But there could be a 24 hour person that just has to fill that week and they have also coverage or they have other benefits they don't need to done. That's one of the things that was concerning me with us at making this new advertising pack. I think somebody's going to want full time competition. Right. And that's, and that was the question, same question last night. I said, I don't know what's out there. There's plenty of people that, like, people that we've just hired going out lot 40. It's a newer thing than a year. It used to be, I want a town job 40. I'm going to do my 50, I'm you know, 30 years, whatever it is. And I'm going to get out of that. I haven't had that conversation with any new employee yet. It's all about personal time, dedicated time. You know, just and I had this conversation. People have awareness of personal life. Yeah. It's not for me. You know, that's a different, that's a different era, right? Trust me, trust me. I, I live on that every day. We use like 50, 55, 60 hours. I mean, people used to be like, what am I getting for overtime? What am I getting for overtime? Exactly. And, they wanted and, overtime. Yeah. And now they're saying, uh, do I have to work overtime? Yeah. It's different. It's, it's totally different. strange. Yeah. Sorry, but that's, I'm just saying that is that is a good question. And I think if the market is different, that we might find that. Somebody that doesn't call it work life balance mm -hmm. that says, Well, I'm doing 24, but I'm going to need, I'm fully trained, can do this, but I need the upper end of the 30. I can't do the 21. Right. And I think that's more of a conversation than and, yeah. maybe not. I, don't, I, don't, I can't do the, the backup. Really, we had um, the planning side, the regional planning commission has planners that special projects can still be helped by the planning commission for that. The zoning ministry is always going to be the harder one. So that's usually one you want upstairs, the newer people that are coming in, do the site visits and all kind of stuff. That's more the in your face customer service person that needs a body. And that's, uh, that's. And, and if, if the applicant comes in and, and let's say he is a Ron Jr., right? We should be looking, we should be able to say, okay, we're going to have this town administrator and then Ron will be a support. You can only have retirement. We should, right? We have that opportunity still. You have all sorts of, you have lots of options. Yeah, we can, we, we, that's right. That's yeah, right. Well, well, the good question, once through the door, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> right. well, that's right. You have an administrator right. now that's leaving, so why not be making sure we're looking for that, other than I understand the roles and responsibilities right. there are a lot of them. Yeah, I think there's going to be an overlap. I just had a conversation with the Jericho town planner, same kind of thing. You know, they hired her for projects and planning commission support, and they have a full 24 hour zoning person in Jericho. And I think I didn't catch if she was a full time. But when the select where is the project or whatever, they have the planner actually will pick up some projects. So you have these multi-purpose loads. And then for Hyde Park, there's enough projects that I think when, when I'm looking at projects planning and trying to administer, if you get the right person, they and I and I've talked to Chen about this a little bit, you gradually let them experience those other hats. 
because you don't want them to sort of short, short circuit on things that you want them to do good. So you know, well, so when Jennifer settled in, he's doing everything at a high level and she's really comfortable. You don't want to throw something on that just blows up her day and she doesn't like the job. Right. Yeah. But she may be willing to take pieces of project management, not necessarily the whole thing. Yeah. So the town administrator can do that, and the planning and zoning person could do that. And then you have a mix of this is the right mix now. We're not quite there yet, but as told, that's why I said it's an option to try to transition to something that works well for the town. And I, I use five years for the planning commission. In other words, changes that you've made with Justin, the assessors, the planning and zoning, trying to redo my job is more like a five year staffing plan. That's why I can find a write it all out there. I don't see multiple changes all the time. And that was a fear of like trying to join us a little bit yeah. in the last meeting. Right. It's like you're making changes, you're going to keep making changes, all of a sudden you're doubling your salary. I don't think that's a concern. I think it's really a good job to use the right people that are really good at it and have them comfortable in their balance and work life and show up every day and be happy to be here. Right. So, and again, recognizing what Brian said, we have a $3.1 million budget, we used to have a $2 million budget. How long before we have a four million dollar budget but still the same amount of revenues in the town paying that same budget so yeah that's your job in October. yeah Everybody. can i ask a question sure is is ron leaving <laughs> <laughs> yes well, <laughs> yeah. Part time. yeah he's yeah he's he's working on his retirement no <laughs> you can't leave ron we love you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, we're, we're, we're totally taking this the long road. We started talking about getting 33 years in the state retirement system back October when we do the budget. And now we're at the end of trying to figure out what the exact changes are. Um, but I also told the board that I would work with you on a good transition so everybody kind of does it in an orderly process and there's no hiccups. So I, it's not going to be a hard drop. Elisa, it's more like, how can we make this work for everybody to get the town where it needs to be? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> and, and Ron's wife not come and shoot all of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She does have a part in this. <laughs> but trying to keep it positive, Elisa, so I, you, you'll be happy in the end, I think. That's one of the goals, because the, the town administrator does serve all the committees and that it makes things happen for the committees and right. the times that i haven't been at committees and then they say we had to meet again in a month because we didn't have one question those are things we try not to have happen with all your volunteers okay so what do we have would we just have to approve the job description yeah, and then come parts. up with a plan for yeah you'll have an approved on whatever date you know april 11th for uh, advertising and we say you want to go right out if you want to wait yes yeah i think i think i think yeah. going out sooner helps things keep moving right uh, okay, okay so need a motion okay a, a motion to approve the job description yep okay i'll make the motion to approve the job description second okay all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. anybody opposed anybody abstaining okay now, when would we when we want to advertise instantly? Instantly, right? Yeah, yeah. The ad is ready. And the review committee, just like we did with Highway. I, I, whatever's interesting is that planning zoning is the. It takes a little bit of skill to work with people. So we we when I was in Richmond, we hired an engineer, and he was so exact on everything it was almost unbearable it was very, very exact black and white you're off by two inches you need to take off that piece of your wall because you said you know that kind of very uh from the slight board and planning commission to deal with those kind of complaints exactly 100 percent right but no flexibility and that i think that's one of the key things because we really don't put people through the ringer neighbors put other neighbors through the ringer yeah. court process for zoning, but the town doesn't usually initiate that. We give that people have a chance, second chance, third chance, you're making progress, everything's good that way. And that actually written it could be zoned by a lot. We're one of the few towns that have a um, informal resolution paragraph that's written into the bylaw that says if the landowner is in violation and they're working towards a resolution, 
a lot of pounds have, if you're in violation, you're going to get a divorce. Um, we have this intermediate step, which I think most people appreciate, even though they don't really know that's what's happening. Well, you're being pretty, like, you know, you know, giving me all this time. I was like, if you're okay mm -hmm. on a resolution, then we can work to the end. So that's the kind of thing that on a search committee, you're going to be sort of asking for. Maybe they won't answer it the right way, but you have to see it. Yeah. So I'll be looking for that on the interviews. And I think any any one of you thinks it's really about what was your experience in zoning and what, what is this person saying? Do you want that type of person or do you want this? And I think we want somebody that's in the informal resolution. I understand how to do that, work well with people at a mode. Yeah. And, and listen to people and respond to emails and phone calls and just things that help people because you can really get from people with poor communication. So we can pick out one or two people later if you want. Uh, ads will be out you know soon and then in a couple of weeks we give it just like highways out now. Uh, all the all the places got advertised by last week or Monday they're out DLCP. Have we, have we had interest in the Mark said he got one or two calls, but I don't think he, he wants more choices, I think is what his summary was. I, I think we need more people to choose from. I don't want to have one or two and then and then and then close it and try to make a decision. So if we have to re-advertise, then we get into the whole discussion about well, how do you re-advertise? So came out today. Slightly, slightly better uh benefits. I think mm -hmm. it was like 10, 10.6 percent retirement contribution where we do 5.6 or 6.0 or something. So they beefed up the retirement contribution. The pay ranges were actually really close. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. They were really, really close to ours. And they have a two two dollar bonus if you make it past your six months. So ours would almost be exactly like so if we had the two dollar bonus at six months. But I was sort of surprised that I was like, okay. Me too. Yeah, that's yeah. Not bad. You know, but the benefits though, I didn't get to all the cross matrix benefits. They might be a little heavier on benefits that you don't see with the hourly. But yeah, I, I don't know if we have to do a sign on bonus if we get really aggressive because people are looking. Of course, I don't know if Morrison's still looking, still looking. It's all the same bodies. There's only so many bodies in the oil county. We try to keep people within a 30, 40 minute ride. The most. Yeah. So, well, what, 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 you know, I, I think Cambridge advertised with a bonus not last year. Um, Somebody out that corridor advertised with a bonus to get I will. Are you bonusing or just advertising? I don't like it. I think if they want a job, they can come play for a job, but bonuses. These are good jobs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, they get to work for us. Yeah. <laughs> they brought them lunch today. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, we have to work on the union contract as a one liner that says, the town will work on an incentive pay uh, plan for training for training, right? And I, I gave them a draft like last October, and it got lost over the winter. And that's another free winter. I said, I'll come over for lunch. Really? I don't know if you guys have done I just drive on Route 15 to come in this morning. And, uh, there's a little pie place in Underhill Flats across from the Underhill Jericho Fire Station right there. Delicious. Uh, you got the maple pie. That's good. <laughs> They're so good. The maple pie is like oozing with syrup. I was like, how did they make a pie out of syrup? I don't know. <laughs> but it was really good. Not again, but uh, everything meat pie and uh, to you with that too. And a and a pulled pulled pork mac and cheese pie. So yeah. <laughs> so they were like. Very happy today. It's going to say, no wonder Ryan ain't tired. <laughs> it's a sugar, right? Exactly. Right. Well, Anyways, okay. I think it is a good place to work, only because we, we kind of do respect them and we yeah. hear them. We don't argue a lot with them, you know, that kind of stuff. So they, they feel like it's a good place to work. Place to work right. As well as getting all new equipment all the time. No. And they don't have to, like, like so their, their department, there's a lot of handwork. Those guys got to get out of a lot of handwork. They do. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't have handwork. Right? Mark, Mark likes his parts. He likes the tools. Yeah. So, yes. like our winner, it's truck and loader. It's not totally. no blower on a side street or yeah. or oh, sidewalk. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The build does that. Right. And, and dealing, with, dealing with time. Yeah. So, we have like, yeah. Okay.
We need anything else or that's set then? Okay. So we need to give you an update about the plow. And does everybody know the price? I don't remember if I mentioned it last minute. You said you said which which is fine because we got yep. We got deductible a thousand dollars. So it's only gonna cost us a thousand dollars. I mean stuff that's all right. They stayed incognito last time. You and I were, were not privy to this information. Still. Well, Mike Griggs had a little episode <laughs> with a new truck. He run over the plow. He dug into the dirt. Was he? And I'll tell you what, I've done the same, oh, yeah. done the same oh, yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. like, oh, like, oh, yeah. like, okay. no. But it, it happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like that. And it's going to be an insurance claim, and it's, uh, I think it's 60,000, 65,000. 65, 65, oh, my which, Lord. Which today, a thousand dollars is nothing, as you know. Oh, oh no, no, that's right. The fact that the cost, right? The cost of that is well, crazy. you know, that's everything did what it was supposed to do. It broke, bolts broke away from the frame. It didn't twist the frame because mm -hmm. I don't know if you see it, but a few years ago when the, the state truck hit the um, abutment down here on that bridge on the interstate. <laughs> you see that one? I did. I did. I mean, it twisted that frame. It twisted everything all the way back to the cat. That truck was a total, total right? You know, right. and and today they're getting better on the bolts or breakaway bolts or something. Oh, well, so when something happens, it just yeah. 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 I showed yeah, you the totally picture that sent me. I don't have my phone on. Right. Right. But you know, yeah, I know it happens. Mike just got to go on. And yeah. His yeah. Pride, his pride is there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, so we need to make a motion to advertise this. Do you need a motion to advertise your act? Uh, no. I no. No. Okay. The law group, well, I need next meeting some names to do the interview stuff. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. We're going to proceed with the plan to, to advertise. I just need the, the job description. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We need to do the vendor list. Here's the vendor list. This was on. Yeah, um, it was on the website too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I did too. Yeah, I see that. That's the uh, that's the annual. What we do every year is try to true up vendors because they get stale on their inventory of things. So we go back through insurance and check addresses and try to update names, whatever. And it's sort of a checkpoint. It changes all year long. We add vendors, kick off things all year long. This is the true up where the board gets to look. Mostly to see if there's vendors on there that you have concerns on or questions, and then we'd go investigate it, come up with a what's going on type of thing. And we've only had a couple questions, uh, primarily related to some performance on an old job or something like that. And sure. the time to go the way after the pilot anyway. So yeah. you may not want the town to be doing business with somebody for that reason. It's kind of a sticky issue to actually say that yeah. live, but you can act, you can. Say we do not ask experience usually yep. don't want to continue business with that person so we won't get close to them but anyway you can that's really just a review so you know how many people you see other business jen uh, is responsible for that list keeping it up to date so she has very good insurance for anybody that works in town she has a w9 for any kind of check we write so she's sort of the manager of that list as well Okay, folks looked at it because we need to approve it. Yeah, I I'm, will make a motion to approve the 2023 vendor list. I'll second. Okay, you guys need to look at it longer or are we, you're good? Yeah. You're good? Okay, all in favor of approving the 2023 vendor list signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Yeah, I thought it was funny how they had like a couple towns when I looked at it earlier. It must be those are like towns that we bought something off of, or they bought something off of us. So, yeah, we did. Uh, St. Albans should be on there. Yeah. Yeah. Off of yeah. on there. So that's why I was like, why, why are you going there? Uh, I'm not sure. Sometimes they'll host an event and we go to sit up and put it down there. The library might have gone down there not too long ago. So when they host the event, we pay the town for that. But not regular. You're right, though. Not, not too frequent. Okay, hazard mitigation grant. You'll remember 2021 or so, the select board approved a 
brick grant building resiliency in build, building resilient infrastructure in communities. And that's part of FEMA. And FEMA said uh, we have 90% money for scoping of your any projects that you might have that are significant, at least in that small project. So we offered Garfield Green River Culvert, which is Garfield Road in the state park entrance and Wickham Island, which we've had multiple incidents each of. Not all of them, this is like every five years or 10 year type of history, but they repeat there. And that's part of the eligibility of FEMA is repetitive issues with structures in particular. Dubois King has been working with regional planning for about eight months, and they're coming to your next meeting on April 25th with their recommendations for two new structures at those locations. This is the scope of our. What's the one of the Green River? Um, it's a nine foot culvert. Under. I thought Kenny replaced that. And he never, you mean the one that crosses the Garfield Road right by the ocean? Yeah, so that, right. So that was replaced, we think, in 2009, maybe. So okay. 2009, somewhere in there. And it's, it's, it had some rust on the bottom. So it's getting that pitted stuff on the very bottom, but it's still a good structure, except it's undersized right now. So the new rules, you know, the new rules? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's aquatic too, right? So you have to fill that with stream bed material. With, with their, that it's one of the final designs. You know, all Better off if you get some money, you're better off just to put it down here and bought the cover. Well, right. well, you'll see, you'll see the recommendations are the UIK took the existing conditions. They also, for the Green River, had to consider the hydro dam. And, right. and we've said, well, if you're, if there is any discussion about removing that dam, make sure we incorporate the calculations for a right. free, free run of river. Not, not because it's going to happen. But if it does happen, we don't have to do another bridge project or another project. So they do have a hydro uh, schedule. They have a schedule of releases, which so far that culvert is handling. Mark was there last uh, Thursday. They asked him to go take a, a quick measurement up there. It, it was flowing so fast that he didn't want to get anywhere near the inlet. Oh, the, the water was just pounding on the road there. Just when they do the release, yeah. you don't want to be anywhere near that over right. structure. You'll be, you'll be in Dunkin' Donuts before you do <laughs> <laughs> it. It's, it's that. It's that. Yeah. 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 On the 25th, you'll pick a project. You'll select a project. The only problem with this is this is a different grant application. That's not your agenda. It's kind of mitigation. It's different programs still under FEMA. They had a window, and this is something that Rob Moore has been and Alec Jones at the regional office to try to help me with, <laughs> have been watching the deadlines for when the um, FEMA eligibility re returns to their 75% funding. So right now they did a temporary, like a COVID extra money deal, ARPA money. I don't even know where the extra money come, but FEMA changed their standard 75% match to 90% if we can get within that window. So the grant deadline for the hazard mitigation is coming up like May 1st. The state had an artificial, not an artificial, but a programming deadline yesterday. So last night we're, we're getting all this last bunch of stuff to the state so we can at least get the projects in there. They emailed today and said, we need a few more. So Alec Jones, it's like photos and contours and whatever, and sent those to the state. So I've, I've been signing the paperwork, which says, yes, we want to move forward under the BRIC authorization to move the projects forward. But I wanted an action item tonight to sort of reauthorize, to know that you're, you're changing grant programs to high, instead of BRIC, it's HMPP. And that we'll continue to do that. Part of the estimated cost for both projects is, is probably under, but it, it, because we don't have a scoping report, which is on the 25th, as long as you get your project in, you adjust that amount as you finish your scoping and, and get closer to the design. Okay. So we don't have a design yet. We have, we're far away from the process. But the Garfield Green River is uh, 50000 with a 10% match. And it might be possible, we have to ask for the state for the 7.5%, which we're getting on the Halloween store. Yeah. So that means 2.5% for the town coffers, which is a really decent deal. Even if we have to do ten percent, which is what the FEMA grant requires, um, it's still you know seventy five thousand on a, on a 
bridge that would be good bridge over that sure I can't remember exactly what the slide was there. Um, so Wick Wickham Island, the same thing that uh, that is less eligible because the engineering report hasn't come back on a benefit cost analysis. Benefit cost analysis basically says for every dollar of federal money, you're going to save at least one dollar or more to the local economy residents, whatever, businesses. Where is it on Wickham Island, though? It's right at the Barnes Road intersection. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's a it's a single single lane old bridge that we got a report from 2017 from V Transit said, yeah, this should be replaced. That was their old inspection report. We have nothing else to say. Right. And what we can't see is the under the footings. Which we know is scoured underneath the footings, which is going to eventually get to the road again. We have a whole bunch of stone along the river on the, on the east side. That stone is protecting Barn Road, but it's also bouncing the water into the private properties where Fred and some people live. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'll see that too on that side. Yeah. So the, the goal of this one is to widen that span so the river has more of a natural flow, doesn't bounce around so much in there. Plus, turn it to two lanes. And that'd be a big structure. Yeah. The, the, that one is. is Program at 750 on a just informational level to program it, probably going to be in the 2.5 or 2 million. I'm guessing the prices don't go too much crazy. So, <laughs> so those are some big numbers. Are yes, right? yeah. If it's 90, yeah. if it's 97 point time with money, you know, it's different. Yeah. If it's, if it, so, I know that's one thing we'll have to look at. You know, during this process, and at some point, if, the, if FEMA says you're approved to go right through construction on this, then we're like, okay, what does that mean? You know, we have we have to find the ten percent or the two and a half percent, but even those numbers are going to be large. Large, yeah, yeah. yeah. But better than seventy five. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's what we accelerated that. So I just wanted to let you know that we got to, even though you're going to see the scope of the report in two weeks, we we are applying just keep moving forward. Yeah. So yeah. It usually doesn't happen like that, but the timing is is required to, to do that. Well, so what's our action? We just kind of vote. Well, yeah, you can going over the HCI. Yep. Authorized. Authorized yep. Rob to be the uh, grant administrator for headboard necessary for the HMDP grant for the two sites. Motion. Second. Yeah. <laughs> <I'll, I'll, laughs> go, going for that 90. All in favor signify by second. Jason, I have to be able to know how to type it. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. If he has questions, you always have to Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Standing? Okay. Private road names. I do have one question oh. on that one. Yep. How much is the Green River? Because two point five for the Wickham Island, right? Seven hundred fifty. What do you say? Yeah. They're, they're both seven fifty going in on the grant application. Seven fifty might be doable on the Green River if it's a large structure box over, but on the yes, yes, over two million dollars for the Wickham Island Bridge. It's not part of the current grant application. It's yeah. So it's currently right just now. yeah. Well, it's it's seven fifty, right? Yeah. Right. Okay, private road names. This was when Brian came in and asked for his right. signs. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, um, this is uh, Craig Fowler. Craig Fowler. Serene Country Cabins. So, you know where that is? Like, where oh, okay. Oh, no? Oh. We just been looking at the other day at the census. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, you see that. It's got a nice website. Yeah, they're so cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, yeah. Really, they're really nice. Yeah. So he, he got caught up with the State 911 board. Uh, they do audits all year long. They'll still use their new imagery you know, from satellites. They can zoom in on people's backyards, driveways. They start to map things and they'll say, geez, this, this overlay just. There's roads in here, and you don't have me as a 9 coordinator having told us the road there. What's going on? They email me with big circles. What's this? Question. So I emailed Craig that. And I said, Craig, I think you're you're done building now, right? Because he has roads in there. He had four units plus a house on one. 
the first drive on the right as you go north. Then he started in the second. I think that's what triggered this. It was a big enough change to see the second drive in there, yeah. two new units. I think he's going to defer the third. But yeah. and then there, there's a new road going in beyond them, too. That's a single drive. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a long time. Yeah, that's that's a 1600 foot drive. This one, there's uh, three units or more on each driveway. That's where the state triggered the number. If you want to be able to give the number to the unit, which is related to the distance from Brook Road, we're going to see. That's what they want the numbers on. They don't want like one, two, three. So he requested these two names. Yeah. So going back to last week's conversation, we just make the motion to approve the two names. And then when it gets, it gets kicked back by the 911 board, then he'll have to be proposed. Yeah. I, I looked at the list. I didn't see a conflict with these two, and we'll put a note into the nine one board that the board has approved these two to go forward, and then nine one will we'll, we'll say I'll get the problem out. Yeah. They look at it a little more strictly than I do. I kind of look at the town and the neighboring, the neighboring town, and they might say, "Well, this might be this is the third one in the county," and I don't think that part. I'll look at the neighboring town. So if you vote to approve it, then we have to sign this order to get all that stuff done, and then. Uh, in the past, private roads were paid by the landowner. Replacement of the sign was paid by the private landowner. Uh, in Brian Jones' case, he paid, and then we changed the sign name on him, so he already right. paid. Yeah, yeah. So what a what a waiver of the money. I'll make a motion to approve it. The two names and didn't pay for the signs. Second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay. Minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. <laughs> oh, well, three eight and three the point. Yeah, so three twenty, right? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. We got the town warrants. Do Do I need to abstain for half of the three eight meeting? I missed half of it. <laughs> <laughs> now you're in the important half. <laughs> Okay, everybody, we got that. We got the warrants. We are going to need an executive session. Let's see. We took care of the old business. Any more old business? I sure hope the state comes through with that one. That would be nice. Every year, this village gives us a consumer confidence report, which has their numbers of uh, contaminants in their water supply required by the state of Vermont. For example, lead, uh, they had zero. And the allowable was it's 15 parts per billion. That's what this report. Do you want copies of this? No, thank you. Read that stuff? No. It's a lot of copies. <laughs> the past couple thousand. I'm sorry, what was that couple? What was that once? This What's copy? in the village town okay. village water, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the village water is a confidence report. <laughs> it's sort of interesting to read once, I think. Okay. Yeah, exactly. There's one. Okay. I've got a few of it to work, so I can just say I understand oh, that. Okay. So that is very interesting. I so, um, um, <laughs> there you go. Oh, we, I will make a motion to approve the warrants. One report with multiple pages. Sorry. Okay. okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Uh, Let me go in. We're going in on um, personal for executive. Yeah. I have a comment on the warrants. The okay. Next one, Claire, yep. that we'll discuss. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, right. Go ahead. Well, we've talked about money wise, and like Krista, I see that I don't understand. Kim and Krista's payment, I guess. Okay, all right. We'll we'll talk about that. Next I, see, I saw that Krista right. was more than Kim, so I didn't know if that was a discussion or how that works. Yeah. Well, well she's still getting dis her disability pay, which is less. Well, we need to go into executive. Okay. 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 So okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's true because the other part is made up by insurance pay. Oh, okay. Right. There you okay. go. That that's what I thought. Yeah. That, yeah. That's all you need to hear. I was like, so. Okay. so so the town wise, they, 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 I didn't know if there was an yeah, adjustment. Numbers were off. Yeah, yeah, they did. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It's, it's exact. We had to we audited ourselves to make sure it was right. Cool. 
So I'll make a motion to go into executive session for you know personnel issues. Personnel issues. Yeah. Okay. Need a second. Um, need a second. Recording stopped. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Just a second. Aye. Right. Turn the right. Okay. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. So I'll make the motion um, in lieu of Krista acting as our town clerk. We're going to offer her a five hundred dollar monthly stipend in in that act that our existing town clerk is absent and her taking on the additional roles uh, starting from March first, going on till our town clerk returns. Second. Okay. Any more discussion? Oh, we should add that we're going to have the delinquent tax collection position review. Yep. Okay. We'll add that. Add that to the motion. Motion. You got that motion? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Friendly amendment. Right. Friendly amendment. <laughs> <laughs> all, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. We're good. Now I think we're done. We can adjourn. Oh, we need to adjourn. Look. Anybody want to second? Or people want to stand? I know. Second. <laughs> <laughs> they work. Right here. Good work, Bruce. <laughs>